Well, welcome back today. What we're going to be doing today is pulling off all these V6 parts and putting four cylinder parts on. It's a lot easier than you guys think. Now, the reason is pulling off these V6 parts and putting four cylinders is the V6s actually have bigger discs and bigger calipers and everything's bigger because it's got more power. So Toyota decided to put bigger brakes, which is kind of a good thing, but it's a bad thing for us because these brakes right here will only clear 15 inch rims right there these are the tires off this car so these now that's fine but all my doubles are 14s i'm allowed to run doubles so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull off the 15s and i'm going to put 14s now how we have to do this is some people say you can just change the actual caliper no you can't it's you got to change the bracket the caliper the disc the pads, everything. Now all the spindles have the same bolt-in, bolt-on pattern. So you can run 92 all the way up to, well you don't want to run 2000 and 2001 because those come factor with 15. So you can run 92 all the way to 99 brakes on pretty much any Toyota Camry that is this body design. Because all the calipers run the same. So if you have an Avalon and you want to run a 14 inch rim, you can put Toyota Camry rims on it. If you have a Sienna van and you want to run 14 inch rims, you can put Toyota Camry brakes on it. If you have a V6, you can put four cylinder brakes on it. If you have a 2000, 2001, they come factory with 15 inch rims, so you can actually put 14 inch brakes on those. Now this is kind of a shame to take all these apart because this disc looks pretty much brand new and the pads look pretty much brand new so kind of sucks to take off new brakes but that's what we got to do because all my doubles are 14s so the parts we're going to use for this are let's go see them here uh, right here they've been sitting out here in the weather for quite some time these are actually off the the car that i call the world's most rotted toyota camry it was that uh, four-door from 1992. These are 14-inch brakes. They have calipers. They have pads. They have everything that we need. So we're just going to take them and go put them on. So I guess the first step is to drag these inside because they've been sitting out here for about four months. So this is about one of the easiest things you can do. And it's one of the questions I get asked a lot is how do I put 14 inch tires on my V6 and how, why does my 2001 have 15 inch tires and I can't put 14s on it. And this is how you do it. Um, so Lara's actually come with 15s as well. So there's quite a bit of, Toyota kind of flips and flops around on the board. So the first thing we're going to do is pull the caliper off, but we're not going to take the brake line off yet. We're going to wait to do that. So we're just going to pull the caliper off and then zip tie it up to the strut. So now with the caliper put up out of the way, you can just smack the disc off like so, which exposes just our bearing. Now we have to take the four cylinder spindle apart on the ground. So what we're going to do is just pop the caliper off the same way with the bracket and the disc and we're going to put it all back together on this. So what we have here is the 14 inch disc and caliper. So we're just going to slide it right on. You guys are probably saying, why don't you take it apart? Because you don't really have to. Stay it together pretty good. Now we just bolt this caliper on.
So I've pretty much done all this without any power tools, but the next step, I do like using a smaller impact. Just because of how fast it is, I lose as little fluid as possible. So we just cut the zip ties so that we can get this thing into a nicer position. Now, there's going to be a copper O-ring on either side of these, and you've got to keep those copper O-rings. Now what I want is I want to take this one off first, just like that. I got the both copper O-rings there, so if I need to, I can steal it. So we are going to have to bleed the caliper, but hopefully not that much. Okay, I got both copper O-rings, just put it right down there in the position, tighten it up. Done. And just like that, we will need to break, bleed these, but really not that much. It was kind of, you try to do it as quick as possible, the caliper has fluid in it, your brakes are going to be a bit spongy, but they're not that bad. If you're doing like race car stuff or road car stuff, yes, but for derbies, this is pretty much fantastic. You might want to bleed them a bit though, depending on how fast you are, how much fluid you lose, that kind of stuff. I really didn't lose that much, so pretty happy. And now we can fit 14s. So I've put my double on here. I've gone for my new aluminum doubles. A lot of you guys are saying that aluminum rims are really not that good. Um, I don't know. Uh, a couple of my buddies have been running aluminum rims for a while, and they've been kind of holding up half decent. Um, I'm going to give these ones a shot. These are... Uh, they don't look like they're kind of rare, but I, I think they're half decently rare. This, the aluminum is almost an inch thick right here. So they're a very heavy duty rim. Um, they're off an Eddie Bauer Aerostar van. And they're 14s, they're aluminums, they're super thick aluminum. And I wanna see how well they try out. So we got this side completely done and uh, now we pretty much have to go do it to the other side, so let's go do the other side. We've got this side completely done now. Um, I'm going to set it down to see how the height looks. Um, I think it's going to look good. The tires are kind of small, but I do want to give these aluminums a good try. My buddy Steven has been running one of these sets of aluminums for a while and he's had good luck. They're starting to get a little beat up around the rim. But hey, they're, they're derby rims. They're easy. They don't have to modify them. They don't have to weld different centers in. We're not really allowed to do that too much anymore. But let's set this thing down to get a good ride height. Uh, look at this thing. So honestly... It doesn't look that bad. It looks like it's actually sitting pretty high. Um, we still have suspension in this thing. It's all the factory suspension, so struts are just blown in it, I guess. But uh, yeah, so now with all the front brakes done and the rear brakes done, I can kind of switch my attention to the interior with the cage, the battery box, the gas tank. I still have to drop the factory gas tank. I want to move the what do you call it uh, the fuel filter off the fuel rail sorry off the frame rail and bring it on the inside through that hole right there so that will be the next video but um, honestly we are coming along very well um, the limited time I do get to work on this thing I'm trying to spend as much on it as I can to get you guys some content and the derby's coming up so I would like to get it kind of ready so thanks everybody for watching. Uh, we're going to give these aluminum rims a good old fashioned try. If they break, they break. If they don't, they don't. Um, yeah. We still haven't really decided what we're going to be running for bumpers. Or anything like that. So, um, Yeah, let's keep going on this thing here. Uh, very limited what we can do. So we're just going to have fun with it pretty much. So thanks for watching everybody. We got the front brakes all done. We got 14s on it now instead of the factory 15s. The rules say I can't swap spindles and realistically I did not swap the spindles. I just swapped the calipers and the discs. That's it. There was no modifications. There was no spindle swapping. There was no spindle changing at all. Just simple brakes. So 
The only advantage that this gives me is I can run smaller rims, and the reason I want to run smaller ribs is rims is because all my doubles are 14s, not 15s. So thanks, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you back here tomorrow or later on on Zach's workshop.